Yes, uh, after more than half a century of my involvement in association with the Esalen Institute, uh, it's a privilege and pleasure to remember the olden days and to uh, remember the Esalen legacy um, and also how I participate. Um, I am very privileged and fortunate to be able to come here first uh, by the invitation of my friend, mentor, uh, co-leader Alan Watts. And he invited me to come to Esalen when I was a young professor at UCLA. And I was totally immersed in my artistic endeavor and my, my, my own work academically, but I was aware of this new uh, movement. And because I happened to get to know very briefly Aldous Huxley in Hollywood, before he passed on. Um, I loved his concept of human potentiality. And I heard about a place called Esalen just about to begin and was co-founded by two Stanford universities and they were uh, students of Alan Watts. And I was aware of Alan Watts' books, but I had not met him. And through some good fortuitous reasons, and he found me, invited me to come up to Esalen to visit him. And at that time, uh, we had only the lodge for food and eating. After meal, we would put all the chairs and table away to do seminar there. It was informal, it was wonderfully intimate. Uh, I was impressed with this beauty, beautiful place. Uh, I also loved hot springs because I grew up in China, lo loving the hot springs. So I um, left China 1949, when communists um, took over, when the nationalist Chinese went to Taiwan. My father was on the nationalist side, so I was only 11 years old. Uh, so we fled mainland China to Taiwan. And I grew up, finished my high school and first half a year of college. And at that time, Taiwan is such a small island. We we young, young folks, we got to get out. So I applied for a scholarship and I came to America to study. Uh, my early study was in architecture. In fact, I finished architecture and became an architect for a short period in Beverly Hills. But during my college days, because my early training with Chinese classics and Tai Chi and Kung Fu, uh, I loved to move. So I, uh, I joined the dance group in college. In fact, that was my early fling with the theater and dance. Uh, I, I tell people I may be the only Asian person play Curly in Oklahoma. I used to say I was Curly in Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, I was fascinated by American musicals, even as a child in, in China. I loved MGM movies. I dreamed to be like Fred Astaire's and Gene Kelly's. And, uh, and of course, and. Life has a way of turning things out. While in college, I was dancing in musicals and I was f having some flings with, with movies. And uh, eventually I met, I was in, in the movie and I met Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and I had my dance company. I had a whole young career. I was a young designer architect at Victor Gruen uh, Associate on Beverly Hills. And my colleague one day said, I have a new car. Would you like a ride? I need to pick up my girlfriend in the North Hollywood Dance Studio. I said, oh, sure, I'll take a ride with you. So we took the ride to North Hollywood. I still remember it's a place called Moro Landers Dance Studio. And we were waiting for the, his girlfriend to finish his, her ballet class. And I was standing in the hallway and suddenly I, I heard this noise in the next door rehearsing and this little black man came out. I recognized him, Sammy Davis Jr. He looked at me, he said, hey, I need a Chinese, can you dance? <laughs> I said, of course I can dance. <laughs> so he taught me the Times Square steps and I learned it. He gave me another routine, I learned it. He said, wow, you're good. Uh, go on tour with me, the rehearsal begins Monday. And I said, wow. You know, you're great, I, I, I'm a fan of yours, but I have a job, I'm an architect. He said, oh, quit your job and come with me. <laughs> that, in a way, turned around, turned my life around. 
I went to work Monday morning and I said to my boss, Victor, I said, guess what happened? I told the story, Victor says, you're kidding, he's my favorite performer. You go with him, I keep your job. Uh, I went and uh, rehearsed and toured with Sammy for seven weeks. My new life really began when I came to Esalen. Uh, that was more than half a century ago. and. And I discovered a new world, a whole new world beyond the academic, artistic world. I was happy in it, but uh, I realized there's a much bigger window. Uh, at that time, uh, American culture, American consciousness was reaching outward. Uh, everybody go to, went to India, went to Japan. China was not possible at that time. Uh, but, so, but China was the lineage for Zen and for all this early Buddhism and Taoism, which everybody was studying. And I was prepared, and I grew up with it. So Alan Watts invited me to teach with him. And I was probably the youngest teacher here, always, almost half, half the age of most teachers here. And I became a good student. I sat by their feet and learned from them. Uh, I still remember um, being here with Fritz Perl, Charlotte Silver, Ida Roth, and uh, early, early mentors, Carl Rogers, and later with Will Schutz, and then come to a group. And, uh, but my real connection with, with Dick Price, he was a Taoist student. He studied Tao Te Ching. He shared his interest in Chinese philosophy with me. So, and also my Tai Chi teaching, and which at that time, um, yoga and Tai Chi began uh, popular and everybody realized you got to wake up every morning with the body properly. Without the body and mind is only a part of the wholeness of human being. So Tai Chi became uh, lessons happening. In fact, I, I must give tribute to the earliest Tai Chi teacher here prior to I, my presence here. His name was Jia Fu Fan. Uh, he is from Shanghai, and same place I was born, and he came from a, a business family. He came here to, to be in a success and a Wall Street in New York. But he, deep in his heart, he was a hippie. <laughs> he couldn't wait to join the Flower Children, so he quit New York and came to Esalen and volunteered to be the short order cook and Tai Chi teacher, and he used his abacus to do accounting. Uh, Briefly, he became very successful. People follow him. He taught Tai Chi here. And then so many disciples and took him away and gave him a house and worshipped him. And eventually he moved away. Uh, but he planted a seed for Tai Chi here. Uh, when I came, everybody said, oh, we got to do Tai Chi. Please teach us Tai Chi. Uh, so I began teaching here. And a part of my philosophical, cultural teaching Every morning we will do Tai Chi before breakfast and get everybody open up body, mind, and spirit all together, which is very much of a Chinese thing to do. No, I was actually quite square. <laughs> I was artistically involved, academically involved. In fact, my the image I can see myself still, I had to wear a straw jacket with patches of, of leather on my elbow. I had a briefcase to teach. Of course, you know, you go to, to the locker room, you take your clothes off, put on your leotards and tights and teach. But that was, that was the time, actually, I was a pretty square. Um, I had the free spirit in me, and I loved the freedom at SLM, but it was a little intimidating, actually. Um, also, um, I was too clean cut. I wasn't ready to inhale and do all those things. <laughs> and uh, But lo and behold, I realized it's the true spirit I was interested in. I want to share the essence of Chinese philosophy. And Tai Chi is a metaphor. Tai Chi is a philosophy. I want to also shift the perception at that time, thinking Tai Chi is a Chinese thing. It's a structured thing you got to learn step by step. In fact, it looks like a soldier marching on, the, on, on Tai Chi deck, which is very un-Tai Chi. Can you imagine all the trees grow the same way and all move the same direction? No way. That's not Tai Chi at all. So I began teaching creative Tai Chi to invite everybody to rediscover Tai Chi every morning with me because Tai Chi must be your own creative dance. 
you must move in a Tai Chi way, the way you are authentically. That is my contribution.